Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today we're gonna do the second video in the series on horizontal plane versus vertical plane agriculture. And we're gonna go into a little bit more detail and explain a little bit better uh, what uh, the differences are as far as management goes. So in the last video, um, we talked about vertical plane production, that is the idea of growing kind of on this vertical plane uh, versus tiered pr production, where we're basically growing on tiers like this. And we talked about the spatial inefficiency of this type of production versus this type of production. And um, after that video, we got a lot of really, really great feedback, lots of really great comments from people, questions from people. And um, one of the ones that came up was uh, questions about plant management and questions about labor. So today we're gonna get into labor a little bit, but we're mostly gonna talk about management and uh, the, the differences between these two different types of production and how they impact uh, airflow CO2, heat, pests and disease, and um, then the, the human management aspects, management aspects of these systems. We're gonna leave uh, management labor and kind of labor costs out of it. That's gonna be the next video. Today we're just gonna talk about these things. All right, so um, jumping right into this, when we talk about airflow in these systems, we're talking about one of the most important things that are incorporated into the design thinking on the front end and then management practices as the facility becomes operational. When we're talking about airflow, we're talking about how removing um, air from the interior of these uh, racks, right? Um, so that we're circulating this air around the plants. This does a few different things. It's removing humidity, right? So it's humidity control, which of course impacts our pests and disease management. We're removing humidity. We're uh, introducing more CO2 because CO2 depletion here in the middle in this zone is high. And uh, you know, it has a hard time basically diffusing here to the interior. So we, act we have to be actively moving um, air aggressively through these environments to keep our CO2 levels at the levels we need them to get good plant production across the entire rack. Um, that's especially true for extra wide racks. So when we go to like eight foot wide racks, this becomes really, really, really important. If we're not evacuating that humidity, um, then we have, then we have uh, disease, mold, fungal issues. And if we're not uh, getting more CO2 into the center of that rack, then we see more growth on the outside here and uh, reduced growth on the interior of that rack. And we don't wanna see that. Um, so, it, because that basically means we're wasting light, right? So we're wasting our electricity, we're wasting all of the energy inputs we're putting into uh, shining a light down on that crop and growing that crop. So we wanna make sure we've got good CO2, we wanna make sure that we're getting rid of humidity, and we wanna make sure we're getting rid of heat because even if we're using LEDs on these horizontal racks, right, we're still generating a lot of heat. And so what we often see is kind of this zone of uh, high heat area right here. Um, and uh, that of course throws a lot of our environmental, uh, the, the environment out of whack. We want to be able to control the heat around the plants. Heat of course, there's kind of a ne negative feedback relationship between heat and humidity. Um, but you know, that, that's for another video. In any case, we gotta get rid of heat, we've gotta get CO2 in, and we've gotta get humidity out. And to do that, we have to circulate air. Now with these rack systems, the, the problem that we encounter is um, something called boundary layer effects, okay? And uh, boundary layers are basically, uh, it describes the friction be that air has with the surface. So if we have um, our horizontal racks here, we have our lights hanging down, shining, on our plants and we kind of have the leaf surface down here. Um, air moves very slowly kind of around those leaf surfaces. It tumbles and the less space that we give our uh, plants between the lights and the plants, so the more aggressive we get about tightening up 
um, our horizontal layers and making them tighter and tighter and tighter, getting the lights closer and closer to the plants, the less control we have over uh, airflow through that area, simply because um, air tends to tumble. So it does this number, right? As it comes through here. And uh, we don't tend to have like perfect uh, airflow through here. Uh, the efficiency of, of our air circulation diminishes the closer we get to that upper surface and that lower surface. And because these are solid surfaces, uh, that of course impacts airflow even more. And so it makes it a little bit harder um, for us to do very tight uh, tiers and get good CO2, uh, you know, circulation to the center of this mass, get good humidity removal and good heat removal. All of this has an effect on our plants, on plant health, and um, of course increases our management costs. Um, so the other thing to remember here is that uh, with, with pests and disease, um, these high humidity environments, in the indoor growing environment, you know, uh, it, most of the issues are with things like uh, thrips and then of course fungal diseases. And these are very, very common to indoor growing environments. This type of environment where we have kind of high humidity areas, high heat areas, and of course um, areas kind of where the leaf surfaces are trapped down against, um, you know, if we have uh, just kind of, if we're doing uh, raft beds or NFT or something like that, we kind of have um, these plants with this uh, layer down here where they're trapping, um, trapping all of this air down against uh, the, uh, the surface that they're growing out of, right? And that's problematic. We can't move air up underneath them very easily. We basically have to move air over the top of them and hope that that circulation uh, removes um, that humidity down there. And uh, of course, this leads to fungal diseases and a lot of indoor growers really, really struggle with uh, mildews down and, and botrytis. Uh, down around kind of the base of their plants as a result. So these are all problems with horizontal that we try to fix with vertical plane. Now I will tell you right now, vertical plane does not inherently fix all of these issues, but what it does do is it gives us a lot more uh, uh, control over how we move air and how circulation in the environment works. It also gives us a lot more visibility into these problems. So with these horizontal uh, layers, a lot of the time, it's very difficult for us to see into the middle of the rack to really understand what's happening there. And kind of as an example of that, um, they set up this uh, kind of uh, a display over here of, of kind of what a standard four by eight foot rack looks like. So these are, this is four foot wide at this point. And you can imagine, this is two layers, and um, you can imagine if I had 18 inches of basil here, so if I was growing basil to maturity with lights under here, that's really only leaving me about six inches of, of air gap between the top of the, the top of the canopy and then of course my lights. And then the next layer starts. And you can imagine um, what three or four or five or six of these layers would end up looking like. Um, and kind of the difficulty, even at this second tier, that we have uh, seeing to the middle of that mass. Now, if it was up another, we'd have to go up. And of course, um, if this was twice as wide, there's it, it would be very difficult to, to figure out what was actually happening in the middle of that bed. So this is problematic because uh, I know there's a lot of people that say, well, we're growing indoors. Uh, we don't have to worry about plant diseases, blah, blah, blah. Totally bogus, right? If you're growing indoors, if you're growing with plants, biology is messy, it invites disease, you will have pathogens, you will have disease organisms, you will have insect pests. These things are inevitable. Just because you haven't had them yet does not mean you won't have them down the road. So exclusion only works for so long. And then once you have a pest, you know, exclusion is pretty worthless. So you have to think very clearly about how you're going to actually see and monitor the center of the mass. Now, some people are using cameras, some people are using other kind of technological equipment to uh, do that work, and that's awesome. But it also represents a lot of cost for small producers, so that's another thing you really have to keep in mind. Um, so this is just kind of a, a simple demo they put together. Uh, you can see this just uh, on PVC here to kind of show you what the, the, the area looks like and that spacing looks like um, with these different, with, with uh, horizontal beds. 
And so um, imagine, if you will, you know, a fairly mature crop of lettuce or basil in here um, and trying to move air through this gap. It is a small gap. And so it behooves us with horizontal plane production to actually widen uh, the space between these levels, right, to give it more space. That, of course, reduces our space use efficiency. And it means we get um, fewer levels uh, within space uh, that we can use without, you, without going to a scissor lift or some type of equipment to give us access to those higher levels. So um, just as a visual, that's, you know, that's what that's there, that's there for. So I've just talked about horizontal uh, plane production and stacking that up and some of the problems that we experience. And um, we'll, we'll do some blog articles on this so that we can maybe describe it in a little more detail. I don't always do the best job in these videos at kind of trying to explain these things. So hopefully it's making sense at this point. If it's not, check out the blog article. I guarantee you uh, someone smarter and more articulate than me will be able to um, explain that better. But um, now let's, uh, I'm going to erase this and we're gonna talk about um, vertical plane production and how airflow, CO2, heat, pest and disease, and kind of the human management aspect of it changes when we go to a vertical plane. So in vertical plane production, we switch things up a little bit, at least the way that we do it. Um, so where we had issues in horizontal plane production with boundary layer effects, we can eliminate those in vertical plane production by not having um, basically a solid surface that our lights are attached to. So in horizontal plane production, we kind of have these um, solid surfaces with the lights attached here, shining down. And so those solid surfaces uh, cause all sorts of issues for us when it comes to circulation. When we go to uh, vertical plane production, we like to stack our production uh, planes, like so, plants growing out of each side, both sides, and then we hang our lights down the middle, okay? Now, the interesting thing here is we can do this in a way that, um, for instance, we're really using up uh, very little space, and uh, a lot of the time we'll use robotic light movers, that kind of thing. But what it represents then is, a spinch, is essentially having a whole bunch of space between these production planes that's essentially empty. So there are lights there, but the way earth air circulates in this aisleway, it's almost as if there are no lights there, there's nothing there, right? So we get very clear, uh, very easy air circulation in this space, either up or down or what have you, which, whichever way we choose to move the air. Um, now the interesting thing is, is with, with uh, the LED lights that we tend to use that have fans and that are generating heat, Oftentimes, um, we have natural kind of uh, air flows through this area. So these are generating heat, and they cause air to rise. They're also uh, blowing air out. So we're getting this really nice kind of circulation, like so, through the, um, through the aisleways. And um, this basically leads to really nice air circulation around the plants. Now you might say, we're dealing with the same kind of vertical planes. Not necessarily. So the way that we tend to grow in zip racks means that uh, we have all of this space between um, the plants themselves. So we have clear air circulation through, around, behind, um, in front of all of these plants. And uh, you know, so this is, this, is, this is great for us. We have very few uh, fungal disease issues. There's not a whole lot of humidity trapped. Uh, around these things. Now these are nice flat bok choy heads, dwarf bok choy heads, so they're not the greatest example. But um, you know, we could show you with lettuce, we could show you with uh, basil, with kale, with all of these other crops, that this type of an arrangement where air can circulate behind and around and underneath and above all of these towers basically allows us to remove heat, allows us to remove humidity, and allows us to get CO2 around these plants uh, in a way that we just can't do when we're growing out of a solid horizontal plane. All right, so the other aspect to this is monitoring. So this is the equivalent of essentially a four foot wide tier, I think a, about five tiers high, um, this single rack of production. So the amount of production we get on a single rack like this is the equivalent of four to five stacked uh, 
stacks planes, right? Um, the nice thing is, is I can see all the way to the top here. And actually I can reach up and touch the top plant. I can check my drippers from here. Um, I can see everything that could be going right or could be going wrong with this tower, with this crop, with uh, disease, with pests, what have you, right here from the ground. Visual confirmation, really, really easy. All I have to do is walk up and down these aisles and I can see everything that is happening with my crop. And you'd be amazed at how much value there is to that. Um, now, we can go a lot higher with these things and a lot of people will say, well, you can't reach up there if you, know, you can't get to the top of the tower. Well, this is what it takes to you know, reach the top of a tower. We just take the tower out, right? And then uh, to fix whatever we gotta fix and pop it back in. And that's, that's basically all there is to it. You compare that with getting in a scissor lift and going up or walking on stilts or leaning in over the tops of horizontal trays to deal with crops, to work with crops. And we're talking about a significant increase in ease of use and um, usability. Uh, when, when we're talking about these vertical systems. So I'm going to leave the rest of that out because we're going to get into that in the next video. In the next video we're going to talk a little bit more about labor and kind of how we think about labor and how we've designed our systems to overcome the labor cost hurdle in indoor vertical growing. So, so one last thing, let me delineate kind of the differences between fixing equipment, dealing with problems, and just checking your crops, right? Because even with a system like this, if we have a button dripper that clogs up like once a month or something, uh, on occasion we will have to get up there and do that. That's why we advocate you know, regular maintenance schedules. But that is different than going through and being able to check your crop every single day, which every farmer should be doing. And um, so when you're maintaining equipment, there's the expectation, yeah, you'll have to get out stools, or you have to do this, or you have to do that, take the scissor lift up, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not the bulk of the work that happens in the growing environment. The bulk of the work is walking through, checking on your plants, making sure I don't have a thrips or an aphid or a, 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 a powdery mildew or downy mildew or what have you, right, in my growing environment, doing that every single day, checking my crops. And that is where vertical plane agriculture shines over horizontal plane stuff. Because I can literally walk through this entire small facility here in a couple of seconds and visually confirm that all of my plants are healthy, that I don't have any problems. That is very, very hard to do in a horizontal plane system. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about labor specifically because labor is always the big constraint in indoor growing environments. Everyone thinks it's energy, it's not, it is labor. And so in the next video, we're gonna talk about horizontal plane, uh, vertical farming versus vertical plane uh, vertical farming and we're gonna talk about kind of the labor requirements of each and I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons because there are there, there's benefits to both we're gonna talk about those in the next video and kind of lay out the case for vertical plane farming over horizontal plane farming when it comes to labor cost I really hope that these videos are useful to you if they are please subscribe keep your ears open your eyes open stay tuned we've got another video coming your way uh, talking about labor and costing on these things and as always, we invite your questions, your critiques, your angry rants. We want to hear them. Send them our way.